start recording. Hello there, this is Patricia from Pinky's World. Tonight I am making a little toy box container. You can see it from the, the photo at the start of the video. I haven't got two of them made, I only have one of these wee toys. So I didn't want to be taking apart the box to use it for the next box. So I'm just going to show you the whole lot as we go along. So expect bloopers on the way. So the stamp set that I'm going to use today is called Part of My Story. And it's one of the freebies out of the Celebration catalogue. Lovely wee thing for doing. Um, it's called the Part of My Story stamp set. And it features sentiments suggested by Stampin' Up! demonstrators from all over the world. So the one I'm using is Let's Get Together and Giggle. Because I think it's wee fun. Thing. The little toy that I'm using is one of these wee huggy things that has a wee rattly in the head. So the head's going to be sitting in the box, the wee arms are coming out and the legs are coming out the bottom as well. So hopefully it'll all work fine. So to do this you're going to need a piece of, I'm using Twinkle Twinkle DSP and it measures 1 and 3 quarter inches by 12. And you're going to need a piece for the lid. In Night of Navy I'm using and it's six and three quarters plus one sixteenth square and this piece is eight and two eighths by eight and two eighths square. So I have went ahead and done this one already. You're scoring it at every two inches and just keep turning it two inches and cut about a one and a quarter inch circle in the center. That's your lid. This one is your base. So we'll go ahead and score it. We're scoring the base at two and three quarter inches on all sides. Two and three quarters just turn. Oops. On all four sides. And that's you. So we're going to score it. Or, yep, score it. Do all your folds up. And then cut just the same basic uh, way I made the box on Tuesday's video. Cut your triangles away. On two sides, two opposite sides. This is the base, it's going to hold the two wee legs, they're going to pop out of the bottom of the base. So we need to punch uh, two holes. So I'm using the one inch circle punch for it, which is maybe a wee bit too big. If you have a three quarter inch one, try it. I only have the one inch, so I just have to go with that. So. I thought it was a wee bit gapy, but not too bad. So you just decide which one's going to be your front. And I'm going to have this as the front. So the two wee legs are going to be out of the bottom of this one. So the only way is either go that way, which will leave the legs pretty high, or be careful and go this way. And I would say don't put them too far apart. I'm going to make a wee measurement just so that it makes sense to you. We have, what, two and three quarter inches to work with. So I'd say if we come over here, maybe three quarters of an inch and line your pencil or your punch with that. So just mark three quarters of an inch and then mark three quarters of an inch at this side. Just to see how that goes. So went to the front and the end and line it up with that mark. I'll punch one there and just turn round and punch the other one using the opposite mark that you made. Make sure it's in the same place. Not exactly but you know what I mean. Get it like that. So we're going to have to cut these away. If you line them up Use your pencil, I'll show you where they are. 
two EAs, aren't they? <laughs> so we know we don't need that bit. Now you can either pop your punch in and punch them away, or just cut the whole section away, whichever you fancy doing yourself. I'm just going to go this way. It'll give a wee bit extra support having that down below. So when you glue them up, they're going to be not showing, hopefully. All right, so I'm still going to cut away some of this because I really don't need it. And the back's the same. So we'll get rid of those scraps out of the way. And we'll glue this up. Glue, glue, glue. None of this will show through. No. Let's see how this goes. Line it up nicely and nothing should show through but you don't want it overhanging at the top either so be take your time with it just be careful you can trim away the top easier than you can trim anything peeping out here you just want your holes to be clear same with this side line it up that over it definitely is peeping there it's better so there you have your two holes for your legs and you just need to fold this up at the back and get that going and that's your wee base So we'll do our lid now. The lid, as you know, I have scored at two inches, turned it round each time and punched or cut, die cut your one and a quarter inch in the centre. So now we want to fold these. And just remember to always add that one sixteenth when you're making a lid for a box, no matter what the size. So again, cut up these the exact same way again. Oops. And this time the arms are going to be in the lid. The hole in the center is for the head and you need two arms. These wee toys are generally the same size no matter where you buy them. It just depends on the bulk of the material they're made of. But generally they're roughly the same so this box should, should fit anyone. I can't remember where I bought that. I bought it before my wee grandson came along and then I went to England without it so he didn't get it. But I'm sure we'll see him again soon. I shouldn't say England, he went to Wales. So you need two arms cut out of here. So again, we're going to mark our centre just to keep everything good. That's two and three quarter inches, which half of that is one and a quarter. One, and one less than one and a quarter. Just in there, just below half. Isn't that right? One and a half. One and a half. Just roughly one and a half inches over. Just to give you a rough idea. So again, get your one inch punch, slide it in that it's sort of the center of the box. Say so line the there's a bit of writing on your punch, line it up with the crease there, and that that'll give you a good guide for the other side as well, and keep it in the center. Punch it out. The same on this side. 
get the center mark, line it up, slide it up to the writings there, and punch. And there you have the tubby arm hose. Now we need to close this in, so we'll need to chop some off. We may have to chop more off because of the holes. But just wait till we get that far. No, they're fine, all closed in nicely. So we we'll want to put some glue on them. and straight don't make it too tight because it's going over your box you could line it up over the top of the box if you want to get the right fit We are actually going to oops, cover this with DSP, so we also need to remember where we're... I bet you I can't do it now. Well, sure, you know what, we'll work it out. That's going to be in the middle. I'm going to check and see if this will allow me. No, it won't. So we're going to do it by hand, right? This is going to be the front. So we're going to have our fold in the center here so that we can cover it with the, the detail of the punch and the stamp later. So just score it by hand. We should put the box on, it would help us to get a firm grip. Right, so start it in the center of your front line it up on your box give it a wee score semi score just right the way around it's just going to be a wrap just keep doing that the whole way around and then you know this is going to join together so slide your box off and your best bet now is to draw a circle with your pencil on both those arms. Hope you can see that. You can see the arm of the the designer paper in there. Lay it down, slide your pencil in and draw that circle. And now just take your punch and chop it out. both of those and that should be that all covered so you want to get this DSP on now doesn't matter where your front is just make sure you've got it lined up Just keep turning your box because you cut it through it. Wherever it looks, I think that looks better. You can see the wee end. So we know that goes there. I'm going to put a bit of tape. Hope I've got some tape left on this. It's near the end. Ugh. I haven't. Oh. So we knew that went there, did we? No. This way. <laughs> I told you there would be bloopers in this one because I didn't get a practice run at it. So we know that lines up, so stick it to the front. Go right the way around, you know it lines up there. And now you want to stick it back together. Just add a 
bit more tape. Oops. Put a wee strip in there if it's wobbling a bit on you. Just make sure that it's lined up with the holes. That's important. Your sleeve or your wee uh, toy hand is going to go through there. They look grand to me. And then go back to the front, line it up. It's overhanging a bit. I've obviously cut a cricket, which is not good. We have a see. I'm going to use one of these and you're going to see it, so I'm going to have to fix that. Make sure you cut your paper straight, not like me. Now I'm just going to give it a slight trim. Really cheeky. Oh, come on, paper. Give me a, a bit of freedom here. No. It's chopped in a lot, so let's hope it works. Yeah, that's a bit better. I think I'm actually going to put it to the back so we don't see it. We keep this to the front. You really need to put glue. This is a work in progress, sorry. I really don't like the way that's not staying close, so I'm going to put a wee bit of wet glue just to hold it all fine. So one, make sure you cut it, it uh, really well so that your two ends line up together. My guillotine would sometimes slip. I really need to get a better stumping up trimmer. Would maybe do it better for me. I haven't invested in one yet, but I'm going to have to because that definitely wobbles when you're cutting a big strip. I've noticed that a couple of times happening to me. It's a big old trimmer my husband gave me years ago. So that's lined up. That's lined up. Everything's looking better. So glue and make sure you're cut properly. So now we need to feed our toy in. This is the wee difficult part. Just takes a bit of patience. Because this is the head, you need to the head hold. You need to thread all this through, so the two legs go in pretty good together. Until you get up to the arms, and then your arms will have to come in here. So you want his wee head fairly straight, and it will it will feed in. Just take your time and be gentle. about till you get it get those wee arms in now because it's material that you can manipulate it to suit you so just do that get this wee arm in where are you in there already yep hiding them is that an arm yep pop them out the sides and then you need to pull him on down you want his head right down but you want his arms out there there you have him, sitting nicely. So the rest of this goes into the bottom and you want to get the wee legs coming forward. So one leg out. This one's got a big thing and you really need to keep them on but I'm taking it off. I can pop in the bottom of the box just for safety. So, you see what I mean? I would prefer a smaller hole for the wee feet. So if you have a three quarter inch punch, use it. And then just parcel them all in there. Nice as you can. And put your lid on. And fiddle about with them until you're happy.
No. I think it's pretty cute. So what we we'll need to do now is the sentiment. I have a piece of white paper and the wee giggle stamp that I'm using and native navy to match everything. Stamp it on and use your punch. Everyday label punch. Stamp it up. I'm going to cut it in the middle. And I have cut another one. Better get this closed in. So I want to cut this one in half as usual. And we're just going to stick it on there. Line it up where you want yourself. And that gives you the wee banner for the front of it, which we'll put on with that on the front there and then you could tie a ribbon round his neck if you wanted we have the knight of navy here see what it's like which the, the mummies can take this off when they get the present just to give him a kind of a wee dicky boat put him down for you There he is, all set and ready to go to some some little boy or girl. This one's obviously for a wee boy. And you can smooch around and play around to make sure that his body, you know, you can poke something that isn't sharp, obviously, and pull his body into place for you through the holes. It is material, so it's very easy to manipulate, and it'll sit better for you. Now, I'll have a better photograph for you when this is all sorted but I think it's cute I really like it I'm very happy with it what do you think yourself let's giggle so there that's it over over and done with not pain free but pretty good I'm happy enough with it so I'll have all the details down below and hope you have a wee go and as usual if you do share it with me so catch you next week bye